Hello, you welcome to this channel. If today happens to be your first time, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment at the comment section at the end of the video. Let's go check out what the Maya being interviewed on GTV. He made straight whatever went on before he started the YouTube and how his father gingered him and how he was motivated and stuff. A whole lot of stories from the A to Z. Let's go check out the video. You're watching GTV Breakfast. I love that conversation that uh, Valerie had with Ajete Anang. Somebody put in a comment and said, the James Bond of the country. And I thought for me that was the best comment <laughs> of the day. Very noble, and very warm, very humble. Ajete Anang with a conversation with Valerie talking about changing the narrative. And that segues nicely into the conversation about to have with a gentleman who is very passionate about changing the negative narrative that is associated ar around this continent of, of over a billion plus people, the continent called Africa. He is Africa's most influential YouTuber, but he also describes himself as that annoying village boy. Woody Meyer is my guest. Woody Meyer, ni hao. Ni hao, kafi. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you? A day like my name. It's good to have you here. Why do you call yourself an annoying village boy? I know I'm annoying. I shout a lot whenever I'm on camera, okay. and I don't want you to come and comment and say, who is that annoying boy? So I need to just describe myself before you leave that as a comment. So, yeah, annoying village. Village, because I was born in a village. Mm -hmm. So I need to combine the two, because normally people... When they watch my video, they'll be like, why are you not wearing suits? Why are you not dressed up? Why are you wearing slippers? I was born in a village. In the village, we used to walk barefooted. This time, I've even made it. I'm wearing slippers. You should be happy. Are you wearing slippers today? I think so, but this is a bit of um, high-grade slippers. Make a see. Oh, you want to see, yeah, eh? I want to oh, see. come on. Yeah, I want to see now. No, should no, I come? Don't step out. Just no, step it's okay. Out. Like, this one is not even, you know, it looks good, right? This one is good. This yeah. one is an upgrade of a slippers. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind when people say things... No, I, maybe I feel like uh, my mind makes me who I am, mm -hmm. not what I wear. Okay. It's the brain that I have in here. Okay. Sometimes um, the things that I say, people don't even get it. But it's because of what I've read. So I feel like appearance doesn't matter. And I learned this lesson when I was based in China. Okay. Um, I was invited by a billionaire to his factory. And the billionaire's son is my friend. We went to the factory. When we got there, the owner of the factory was standing in front of... Uh, the gates, the entrance. We passed him. Went to the administrative. I saw people wearing suits. I started being nice to all of them. Hey, and I'm like, I thought the owner would be there. Now the son told me that, you know what? We need to go see my dad. And I'm like, but your dad is not here? He said, no, you actually passed my dad. And the dad was wearing shorts, slippers, and a t-shirt. When I went back home, I'm a pastor's son, by the way. Okay. So I used to wear suits a lot. When I went back home, I had to pack all my suits and then decided to go with the flow that encounter changed your mind exactly and since then since china days till now i don't feel like wearing suit anymore what took you to china i went to china to study um i did aeronautical engineering so um four years started working for two years and i decided to quit and come back home what does that qualify you to do if you if you have a degree in aeronautical engineering so more like you um you can specify to be somebody who would design airplanes or you also gonna um, do maintenance of an aircraft which it's a course that you need to add to your aeronautical engineering so it's more like you, you specify okay. so for me when i was in school we specify on the wings of an aircraft. So okay, so, that's, so, so that's you, can, what I did. you can design aircraft. Just, wings. just bring bring your aircraft to me. I'll design. Probably in future, I might revive Ghana's aviation industry. So if I give you a p piece of paper and a pen, right, you can draw something for me. I can do that for you. Okay. Are you sure you are not going to take long on the show? Uh, <laughs> See, I'll, I'm going to for me. It's a quick sketch. A quick sketch. Yeah. Wing, yeah. So we, I'm going to go with a flap. Okay, yeah. Okay. So this is an aircraft flap. Yeah. That's it. Okay. You see you when draw. No, that's okay. Them. That's a flap. That's a flap. Okay. What do you want? Okay. Uh, get it more. I mean, this no, is no, the no. basic. This no, is the basic. I'm, not, I'm not giving you basic. So this is like an aircraft flap. Okay. You know what a flap is? Yes, I do. Thank you. Yeah. So that's all you need to know. So you specify on flaps. Mm -hmm. So aircraft, so this was, the wing. This was, this was your specialty. Yeah, the, the wing is big. Okay. So you need to I'll know, see. because uh, like an airplane, right? Yeah, show it to me. Yeah. I'm going to give you so, like an airplane. Yeah. Show it to the camera. Show it to my camera. Where are the cameras? It's right there. This one, this one, this one. So like, this one. Oh, yes. sorry. So the aircraft wing is huge, right? Mm -hmm. So we have people who specify on only the design of the flaps. Okay. And the people who are going to take care of the other part of the wing. So, okay. so you see a big plane. Mm -hmm. 
we have so many components okay. and different people working on a component. So okay. one person cannot design a big plan. Mm -hmm. It's all based on your specification. So you're the flap guy. Flap guy. Why did you choose the flap? It's easy. <laughs> you always want the easy way out. It's easy. So, so the, in case you're wondering, this is what it looks like. So this is yeah. the, the uh, 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 and this is what makes the plane when lift. You, when you, no, when you're coming down, ah, landing, that, that, that moves, comes down. The, yeah, the flaps, the, when you're exactly, landing, it comes exactly, down. Exactly, okay. comes down. Then. Okay, so, so that's uh, your uh, uh, design of, a, of an air, aircraft flap done right now in uh, two seconds by Wodemeyer. Yeah. He says he chose this because it makes it easy for him. <laughs> so so, so, so uh, the next time you're sitting on a plane going to Kumasi or Tamale, look outside, and then when the plane is landing... When, it, those, when the plane is landing, the things that, comes the things down, that come down... And, it reduces the speed of the aircraft. Okay, that's it. all right. And it also, sometimes it helps you take off and stuff. You, did you always want to be a pilot or you were forced to nah, do that course? No, nah, I mean, I, I've always never wanted to be a pilot. I mean, I did. I chose aeronautics because my dad wanted to, me to be an engineer. The but, pastor? Yeah, I mean, African parent. Mm -hmm. They always want to see you do, become a doctor, an engineer, and the rest. <laughs> but along the journey, I had to respect my dad, right? But mm -hmm. along the journey, that's when I discovered my passion. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is what I always preach. I'm not going to tell you be a school dropout. I'm going to tell you that focus on whatever your parent asks you to do. But along the journey, if you discover yourself, go for it. Um, for me, I realized that I love talking, mm -hmm. and um, being a guy who loves talking, I found out no one is paying me for talking. So I had to do research about how can people pay me to talk. for talk. Mm -hmm. So that is when my research led me to YouTube. So I decided to talk on YouTube so that at the end of the day, I'll get paid. Can you remember the first video you put on YouTube? Of course, I remember. What was that? Um, it was more of, um, I, was that even a video? By the way, we're just going to a supermarket and then... We decided to film because we were all bored on campus. And it was more of a, you know, the day, who said Chia? Yes, who said Chia? That... Those days. Yes. That was, that was the time that video was viral. So we we're just going out to, to say who said Chia, our version of who said Chia. And that video, nobody actually watched it, by the way. So, <laughs> yeah, but that was my first video. But is this still in your archives? No, you, it's you still there. And, how many I, views I, I never, now? I think it still have a thousand views or something. Okay. Yeah. And then it, it built from there to now exactly. on YouTube. You have over one point something million, one point one million, subs million subscribers on YouTube. Yep. What does that mean to you? For me, I think it's just numbers. It doesn't mean anything to me. I mean, people say he's the most famous guy. I don't care about the fame or anything. I care about impact. I mean, when you watch my video, what can you learn from it? Because of where I'm coming from, I cannot just come on the internet and just act anyhow I want. I always want my videos to carry a message. I'm glad you're saying this because uh, uh, two hours ago, my yeah. colleague Thelma was having a conversation with two female panelists. Yeah. And they were talking about, uh, they were talking about how uh, uh, women are not getting that, the great role model because all the people who are famous on the internet are half-dressed and are cursing or Thank proud you. about Thank sleeping you. in some guy's Thank boy you. or Thank husband. I, I feel like uh, people are miseducated when it comes to being, going viral on the internet. Mm -hmm. It's all about the impact you have in the society that makes you who you are mm -hmm. like as i sit here i can just go to a place promote the place and people will be going there and when people go there that is fulfillment for me you understand it's all about being half naked on the internet at the end of the day it's just one day mm -hmm. i call that fast food it's more like um you become an internet sensation the same day and at the end of the day no one knows oh. who you are so you want impact i, I want impact i mean People have created YouTube channel just because they watch my YouTube videos. Nice. That is the impact that we're looking for. One of your videos that impacted me was you sitting at the edge of a gutter. Thank you. Eating food. Yeah. I, I want to show that video to my people who haven't seen that, that video and just talk us through exactly what was happening there. So what were you eating? What were you eating, by the way? What was uh, it? It was rice, uh -huh. but that was a spontaneous video. Okay. So I traveled to Rwanda, Kigali, mm -hmm. and um, I realized that the country is so clean. The city is, was so clean. So I was just passing by and I met this guy who was cleaning the gutter. But to me, the gutter was not dirty. So I went close to him and I asked him, why are you cleaning the gutter? He said, it's my job to clean the gutter five times in a day. So okay, let's, let's check the video out. Thank you. Yes, let the video speak for itself. This is Wadimaya, Africa's most influential YouTuber, eating in the gutter. what I do and who I am. So this video was this really video, this is, this is actually my first viral video. First ever. I mean, I, I went to one country, it was in Namibia. And because of this video, I was able to get things for free. Like because what? Of, what kind of free things did you get? Because this video was literally a model to so many African countries. People were like, oh, look how 
Rwanda is this clean. So a lot of people saw it, but they didn't know the man behind it. So when they meet me, I start talking about myself, and they'll be like, oh, are you the guy who did that video? Mm -hmm. That's it. They'll be like, okay, come and do this for our country. That's all. So what's the mission? The chain, to change the narrative of our Africa. I mean, listen, I want to tell you this. I was based in China. And the reason why I left Ghana because I thought you can never make it in Africa. And when I went to China, the things that I was seeing, the things that I was hearing, people just looking down upon, my, uh, upon me because I'm coming from Africa, I feel like if Africa becomes stronger, or if Africa becomes okay, we'll be respected out there. Was it in your face? Would they tell you direct? Directly. What was the kind of crazy thing they'll Come tell you? Come on. Even sometimes you're going to look for a job, they'll tell you you don't look like Obama, so I'm sorry, we're not going to give you the job. That's when they need a black person. But a black person should not be as dark as what am I? You are too dark? Too dark for a job that the description is black people. So imagine the ones that they would say, no black people are allowed. I mean, you might be in a train and nobody want to sit beside you. You might be in an office and your own colleagues will be like, why are you here? So all the time you feel inferior. You when spoke the language. Abroad. You understood what they're saying. Very fluent. I don't know. I wish a Chinese person is here. I would have switched the conversation right now. So I felt like I don't belong there. Where do I belong? That's Africa. So I took it upon myself to come to Africa, to come and tell the positive African stories. See, Africa is not perfect, but Africa is the place to be. Mm -hmm. People are just miseducated about Africa. See, when I was coming to Africa, I came here with $100. I'm just going to tell you this. I came here. It's not one of those stories because these days I've seen that every story that you tell out there, people are saying that you're making it up. Like I told you, I collected loan that I had to pay back. How much? That's like over $5,000. But that is what? Buying tickets. I didn't get even a dollar out of that money. Mm -hmm. With all the five countries that I wanted to go in Africa, it wasn't a loan. My Chinese friend, I think he came to Ghana to see my mom. After everything went well, I invited him to Africa. And he was amazed when the beauty that he saw in here. So I came here. I came with $100. Lived my life. Met people who have made it. They mentored me. And this is where we are right now. So it's possible, it's just that you're not meeting the right people on the ground. That's it's possible, it. but you're not meeting the right people on you're the ground. You're not meeting the right people on the ground. What, 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 so we have a lot of Chinese in Africa right now, wherever yep. you go. Yeah. What, 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 how do you feel about the Chinese presence in Africa? See, um, the Chinese presence in Africa, I would say that it's good for the continent, but there should be a mutual respect, which there is no mutual respect right now. It, it's more like coming to me to beg me for money, and then when I see you, you don't expect me to respect you because you're taking money from me. You understand? So this is the relationship between Africa and China. It, it could have been the best ever, but African leaders don't know how to bargain. I wish I'm the ambassador from Africa to China. Like, I'll get them the best deals because I know how Chinese people act and I know how Africans act. So I know the two. But now I think African leaders don't know how Chinese people act. So they just come in, bring the money, they accept them, and then they take it to the next level. You are part of a th thousands of African students who have gone to China to go and get education. Yeah, exactly. Do you feel that w when you come back to the continent, the, the, the authorities, the governments use your knowledge, the things, the language, the way you've studied, lived with them? You were there for how long? Six years. Six years. Do, do they use... Do you think they care? Well, have you been used no, by the government never. for the knowledge that you have? Never. Never. I mean, listen, Coffee Day, this is, for me, I'm very unapologetic, and I always say this here. The leaders on the continent need to sit down with the youth to discuss on how to change the continent. You understand? The leaders cannot do it alone. The youth cannot do it alone. We just need to have that, what do you call it? I don't know the word to use. Collabo? Collaboration. Mm -hmm. You know, to develop the continent. You understand? Because... The youth out there have the knowledge. The people sitting down there are not interested in that knowledge that the youth have. And at the end of the day, nothing happens on the continent. That's why I'm saying everybody knows the problem of the continent. I saw that But piece. no one is ready. You know, no, no, no one. No, we're we're going to talk and talk and talk till we all go and leave the continent to the next generation. What surprised mo you most when you went to China? Apart from the racism, what, else, what surprised you? It's how developed China is. Mm -hmm. And the fact that when I went to China, where I used to stay was not that developed. But three years along the line, everything changed drastically. It's like when you don't step out in China for like three days or four days, you might be working in a place and you think that you're a stranger. What do you think accounts for this? What's, what are they doing differently? Good leadership. Good leadership. 
And there's accountability. Here, do you have accountability? You don't have it. And that is how, that is why the continent is like this, because there's no accountability. Anybody wakes up and do whatever they want. But in China, you can't do that. You can't just wake up and say that today I'm going to use a motorcade to go and buy a beggar. No. There's no accountability. So everybody wakes up and do whatever they have to do because everyone has the money and they have the money to use it the way they want it. What would happen in China if somebody polluted the rivers the way our rivers have been polluted? For me, I think you're going to get lost. I mean, you get lost. You'll get lost. I mean, China don't joke with that, especially corruption. What do you mean you get lost? Like you get Jack Ma lost. I mean, Jack Ma got disappeared. So he's definitely going to disappear in China if you try to mess up with whatever that is going on in the country. It's like maybe a road contractor in Ghana. They give you a road and it takes you like six years for you to finish one road. I mean, you're going to disappear in China. You disappear? You disappear. No one will even know where you are. <laughs> this appearance is crazy. Like, you vanish. You vanish. That's it. It's happening. You know, you don't know this. I just, where do they go? Do that, you know? that, that is why China is so developed. Mm. They you, care about its people. You, you would like to see uh, contractors vanishing in Ghana? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, I've been saying that so many times. We need to scare the people mm. a little bit. Let them know that this is something that they have to do and they have to complete it. Your mission is to change the negative na narrative ar yeah. around Africa. What, uh, where else are you, have you, are you left to go in Africa? Where have you been to so far? Um, I've been to 25 African countries. I'd love to see your passport. <laughs> I've, All those stamps. Yeah, how many I've, have you gone through so far? How many? How many passports have you used so far? Uh, I'm using my fourth passport right now. Okay, starting from when? When did you start the trip? I think first time in 20... 12 when I went to China for, okay. for the first time. Okay. So four, four passports? Yeah, four passports. Um, where would you like to go next? I'm actually traveling tomorrow morning mm -hmm. to Zimbabwe. Is that your first time to Zimbabwe? First time in Zimbabwe. What are you expecting? Something different. Why are you going there? How, how does it work? Did somebody invite you or you nope. just decide to get no, there? Nobody invites me. This is something that I've taken upon myself that mm -hmm. if no one is promoting Africa the way it should be promoted, I've dedicated myself to promote Africa in my own way. And listen, the, the impact is huge, and that makes me want to move. Because I've never been to Zimbabwe, but the information minister in Zimbabwe is waiting for me at the airport. I mean, in Ghana, I don't think the informa even the information minister would know where I live. He's busy thinking about IMF right now, brother. Oh, wow, okay. I don't know about that, but uh, that's another topic. Yeah, but this is how it is. It's, it's just, I feel like the work that I'm doing, even if I'm not appreciated in Ghana, there are countries that are, waiting for my presence. Does that disappoint you? I mean, who, who has spoken to you on the official level about promotion of Ghana as a tourist destination? No one, no one. Nobody? No one. They know I exist, and they all know it. It's not like they don't know I exist. Mm. Everybody knows that I exist, because I play a major role in people moving to Ghana, visiting Ghana. That's a huge Can claim to make. I mean, back it up. Ah, the facts are there. If you go to Rwanda, there are people that set up shops, working in hotels, bought houses, in Rwanda because of my videos. It's there, even in Ghana. I meet them every day. It's not like uh, I'm saying things that I don't know. I just don't like talking about myself, but I see it. I have 1.1 million subscribers. You know, I didn't want to talk about the numbers, but it seems you want me to talk about I, All these people, knowing that I'm from Ghana, they come here, they visit all the time. How, how do you fund your trips around the, country, the I, continent? I fund them myself. From your work you do I on work, social the media? The work that I do, yeah. How does it, I know you're on, on, big on YouTube, but you're, you're on Facebook as well. Yeah. You're on Twitter as well. Yeah. I don't see you on TikTok, uh, uh, unless you're going undercover there. No, I used to, be, I used to have TikTok mm -hmm. when, um, during the Chinese version of TikTok. That's when TikTok came initially. Mm -hmm. So I used to be um, a TikToker, but I felt like you need to be stupid to be, go viral on TikTok when I was based in China. Mm -hmm. Because it was a new app that came into the scene. So if you are using TikTok now, TikTok was not called TikTok. TikTok yeah. was called Douyin in China. It still exists. So the Chinese version, but we get paid for using TikTok when I was based in China. But at the end of the day, I was sounding so stupid. How do you mean? They always want you to, for you to go viral, mm -hmm. you need to do silly make things. fun of yourself. You know, like before, what? Give you an example. I mean, like using my skin color. Mm -hmm. Oh, saying that if I eat, I eat chocolate, I'm gonna bite myself and stuff like that. Oh man! You know, and <laughs> China, we, we had Chinese audience that time. So Chinese audience, this is the kind of things that they want to see. You making fun of your of making fun of you're black because you're black. Yeah. You know, and 
It's happening in China, even so many, because you make a lot of money. It's happening and, in, even in Africa, because BBC did a, a thing about Zambia, where you had people getting kids to do all kinds exactly. of crazy videos. Exactly. I don't know if you yeah. saw, um, so that was the video that I did, ah. and BBC followed up. I see. So they reached out to me okay. for everything. Everything that BBC did, it was through me. But I just don't like credit. That's why I didn't want to, yeah. It was my video. I brought the video up, and Renaco is my friend, and Renaco has to... Um, go for the journey as discovering where the guy is. What's the most surprising thing you've discovered on your trips around Africa? When I went to Namibia, mm -hmm. meeting the Himba tribe, when I found out that, that uh, as a visitor, they have to honor you or give you a woman to satisfy you before you continue your day. Satisfy how? Yeah, sexually. Okay. Yeah. Did you, were you, did you no, take no, no, part no, in that, no, no, that no, 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 not really, but it not, was shocking. Not, not really? No, no, not really. No, but no, it was, yes. It, was it can't be not really, my brother. <laughs> you know, I, they asked me and I'm like, nah, 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 but it, it was shocking. They wanted to give you a woman? Yeah, so as soon as you visit them, they give you, maybe some of them have two, three wives. So they'll give you one of them. Hey, this is my second wife. Take she's, care she's of my She's available friend. for you. Available for you. You know people who have taken advantage of that? I don't take advantage of those. Yeah, but you know people who have? No, really. Mm. I don't know. Do, do you regret not taking the decision? <laughs> I, I think I just went there, had fun, and got out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that would have been fun, though. I mean, no, it was no, not that kind of fun. It's not that kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, but, but apart from that, the, 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 the sexual gift, I mean, what else excited you about Namibia? The, Namibia is so beautiful. Like, okay, so I didn't even know that there's a country in Africa that looks exactly like Dubai. You see, a country with the dunes, which is the, yeah, the sand. desert, mm -hmm. and the ocean meets each other. Mm -hmm. And after I did that video, the video went viral. I think um, the Namibian um, embassy here, called me two days ago i was there and they were like since i did that video so many Ghanaians are coming to the embassy to tell them that they're going to namibia just because of this video of what am I. so they gave me a long-term visa right now to enter namibia anytime i want to you are a tourism ambassador kind of unofficial That's unofficial yeah unofficial and i don't want it to be official okay why not huh i want to be me i want to be free mm. i want to be able to say what i want to say you know, too many restrictions, you know, because as soon as you start working with an entity, you have to make sure that you go and play by their rules. And when it comes to that, my appearance has to change. But if they, they want to work with me, like they want me to be who I am, I'm cool with it. They have to accept the man who I'm wears cool slippers exactly. and because, shouts in his video. Thank you. Because I don't want to be somebody that I'm not. That is, that is me. I read a, mes a, a, a message here from uh, somebody on Twitter. It says, my ability to learn and study in Russian language was inspired by a video I saw you speaking Chinese. You may not know, but you're inspiring people out here. I'm not uh, fond of choosing role models, but you're one of the few who inspired me, your journey. So this is a tweet out there. So somebody's, somebody, That's amazing. Yeah, That's somebody, amazing. Somebody I, just, I think uh, I've met so many people. People like who, that. Yeah, at the airport, mm -hmm. telling me that because of you, I learned Chinese. There's a guy who lives in a village. I wish I can mention the name. I don't know the exact name, but okay. he has never been to China, mm -hmm. but he speaks Chinese because of my videos. Mm -hmm. He's on Twitter all the time. I think he speaks Chinese. He speaks fluent Chinese, and I was amazed. And all the time he talks me, I think he went to see my mom mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. My mom is here, by the way. I, I yeah, wish I shout could. out to mom. My, yeah, yes, my mom indeed. is here. Yeah. So the guy went to see my mom in the village. So this guy speaks Chinese just because... And he learned it here. He learned it in Ghana just by watching my videos and being inspired to learn the language. Let's talk about your mom, though, because your mom is linked to how we people call you. Exactly. I, I mean, I know you are, you are Berthold. Yeah, Berthold, yeah. Berthold is your name. Who calls you Berthold? My dad. Your dad calls you Berthold. My, my dad calls me Berthold. My mom used to call me Berthold, but I think my mom is now calling me Watermeyer. I wish she can come and say hello to you. <laughs> she, we'll so, take a picture with her. <laughs> um, when I was in China... <laughs> I, I was an engineer, right? But my dad was like, you know what? Don't do this. I mean, you cannot do this and stuff. And I spoke to my mom on phone, mm -hmm. and my mom told me that, you know what? Do what you do, but on a low key, I'm going to convince your dad. Okay, so she's going to do the, the groundwork yeah, for you. Yeah, so <laughs> my mom did all the background work. Two mm -hmm. weeks later, my dad called me and said, okay, I accept the fact that you want to be a YouTuber. <laughs> so my name used to be Ghana Baby. Yes, that because, I, because you are that on Instagram. Thank you. Yes. So I changed the YouTube brand from Ghana Baby to Wadamaya. What does Wadamaya mean? My mom. In Chinese? Yep. Wadamaya. Yep. 
Okay. What am I? means my mom. Did she tell you what she, she said to your dad or did your dad for him to change his mind? I have no idea till today. Please, we'll ask her today. <laughs> <laughs> we'll ask her today. We'll ask her today. I have no idea. So, 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 I mean, this is just a great story. Yeah. Uh, and do you find people asking me for money because they think that you're making a lot of money on YouTube? Hmm, it's, it's, it's a lot, you know, and I don't even know what to do because personally, I declare this year as the year of charity. I saw that. Giving back to the society. Mm -hmm. But it, it seems people see me as somebody who has made it in life. No. I just feel like I need to help. You know, and I have a platform and I want to use my platform to touch lives. I think we've done a lot of projects this year and Every day when I wake up in my DM, I'll get over 30 messages. People asking me for money. What are they? P P for school what reason? Fees, school fees? School fees. My mom is sick. I want to go abroad and stay there. Every day? Every, every single day. Every single day. Especially when I post about something that, together with my audience, we did. To help some people to out. To help some people out. Like, for example, you helped some yogurt seller do something. I, I, yeah, I, I, I met this yogurt seller. Let's see the story. Wow. That's yeah. a, that's I think a the story should be a yeah. Okay, 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 so you tell us, tell us about it. So the yog I, I, I was just vlogging and I met this yogurt seller and then I gave him a hundred cities because I interviewed and I asked him how much does he make in a day and he said 20 cities. So he touched me and I gave him a hundred city out of nowhere because the camera was on. So people watched the video and started sending me money Ooh. to go and give it to the yogurt seller. Wow. So I didn't know how to do it. So I decided to spend a day with the yogurt seller, take my own money, call um, Freedom Cheddar. He came out of his meeting. He also Cheddar is the tiger guy. The tiger, <laughs> the guy was that's his new name, eh? okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, also came out, gave the guy money. We raised almost thousand dollars for the guy. Oh, wow! Yeah, so this year is a year of giving. A year of giving, that's I mean, why the, that's, that's why the people are different, inside your DM. Different right? African countries, not just Ghana. That's why they're inside your DM. Yeah, I think so. They want you to give. No, I mean, I can't give everybody, I'm just gonna do what I can. And my giving is more like when I meet you along the way and something touches me to do something for you, that's what I'm going to do. It's just like being in South Africa. Mm -hmm. I went to South Africa, flat happened. I felt like, you know what, I can help this guy because the man lost the wife and the son, and he doesn't have a house to live in right now. Mm -hmm. So I decided to tell my audience, can we build a house for him? And my audience responded. Whoa. My audience, I'm going to, from Zimbabwe, I'll be in South Africa just to go and build a house for someone I don't know anywhere. You wow. understand? I went to the water region. I met a lady who said the mother died. Because the mother died, she was in Accra. She asked to go to the water region. And when she went to the water region, she wanted to do something for herself. So she decided to um, train uh, kids with disability. Mm -hmm. So when we went there, she was doing that in her room. And I'm like, that's an interesting story that this girl need help. So what I did, I told my audience, can we build a school in the water region? And my audience responded. And they, they did it. We did. So we saw the land. We, the money is already there. We, all we need to do is to start a project. So Great this stuff. is the kind of audience that I have. They're willing to support anything that I bring on board. And it looks like you're, you're, you're going to spread the message not just from around Africa, but to the black diaspora. Because I saw a picture of you with the Haitian flag. Yeah. And I actually said that, that to one of my Haitian friends. I said, yeah. this chap is Africa's most influential YouTuber, and he wants to go to Haiti. Why do you want to go to Haiti? Um, I will tell you something. Africans in the Caribbean, I would say Africans in the Caribbean, and black people in the Caribbean are Africans. Of course. But I didn't know that. So along, the, along my journey, I discovered that. And when I, dis when I started doing videos in Africa, most of them were like, oh my goodness, I never knew this is how beautiful Africa is. I'm coming to Africa. So some of them even came here. Mm -hmm. So when I saw that, I'm like, you know what, it's time to bridge the gap between Africans in the diaspora and Africans in Africa. So I will actually be in the Caribbean in September. Haiti being the first country. I'll give you a couple of people, two people to go and see. I know that, would be our, that would be amazing. Yeah, and, and, be amazing. and learn a little bit words of ever. If you, do you speak some ever? No. Because a lot of ever people ended up in Haiti. So yeah. you will listen to the music and you think it's, that, you're listening to Ghanaian Because, music. you know, I didn't even know that yeah. until I went to Togo. Uh, yeah. I went to, uh, what do you call it? The you Volta see, region. Volta region. And if you go to Togo, there's a place called Togoville. Yes. If you've been there, mm -hmm. you'll realize that the people came from there. Mm -hmm. Because when you go to Togoville, only voodoo, and um, Christianity is the only religion that exists in there. Indeed. So the Haitians mm -hmm. took that from there yeah, of course. and took it to took Haiti. It so when you go to Haiti, it's, it's just there. voodoo. It's, it's That's ever. it. Big time. Wow. Um, somebody said you look, you look a, a bit like, a lot like Marcus Garvey. I mean, the Pan African, I mean, this is Kwame Nkrumah's mentor. Yeah. And they said you are doing what Garvey was doing, the whole back to Africa, Africa must be free, Pan African, everything. Yeah. You are doing it with your videos. Yeah. How do you feel to be 
connected with a man like Marcus Garvey, a great guy like that. I mean, Black Star Line, everything came from him. The, the first time I saw that, I actually cried. That's why I just wrote interesting. Yeah. Um, because I didn't even know who Marcus Garvey is before. Mm -hmm. Uh, I feel like I've lived in China, I'm back in Africa, and um, I think I need to let Africans believe in Africa and come back home. And when I started making the videos, I saw the diasporans moving to Africa. I, I have proofs about all of that. So people thought that this guy is actually doing the work of Marcus, Marcus Garvey. Garvey. Yeah. You know, and somebody started using my photo and Marcus Garvey's photo and said, he looks like Marcus Garvey. Yes, I wish uh, you could pull up that picture of Marcus Garvey so that you, <laughs> yeah, you can see that. Because yeah. you look a lot like him. Yeah, yeah I didn't know yes, that, but yeah, yeah. Yes, and there was yeah. one of him wearing a, a, a hat and everything. You look so much yeah, like him. Yeah, there, and there I think you're doing the work. It is a sign. You're doing, I mean, you're doing um, the that, that, that was that, that, that's, that's you, man. That's you. That's you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Wallahi, that's you. You're doing the work of Marcus Garvey, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and he was, I mean, this is like Pan-Africanism. This is like reggae, Rasta, Yeah. Ghana, everything. Exactly. Listen, um... This, I wish this conversation could continue on and on and on, but uh, I see that you're doing a lot, mm. um, projecting not just Ghana, but Africa. Mm. And uh, let's just take it back to mom, because mom is ready to talk to you now, man. And uh, I mean, describe that relationship. Were you always very close to her when you were growing up? I think I got close to my mom after China. Mm -hmm. uh, after when I came back, I was close to my mom, but not that, that close. Mm -hmm. But when I came back from China, mm -hmm. that's when I learn to appreciate my mom more because the things that she used to teach us with the values that she was instilling within me i thought she was being too much but when i went to china i felt like that values made me who i am today okay. so when i came back i wanted to show her all the love that she needs so mm -hmm. my mom is untouchable that's you, why I like you don't play with your mom no 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 my mom for me and my mom come on she knows it she knows Charlie, it. say something to mama man mama is ready to talk to you i said like you want to talk to me <laughs> so she, she, she's the superstar of my channel yeah so every milestone we celebrate so if you get two hundred thousand subscribers i need to celebrate my mom 300 we need to do something for her we bought a car for her for the channel we do so many things just on her behalf what so is, what did you think I, about all you're doing with the stuff that you're doing i have man? an estate in accra uh -huh. just named by what am i that's her that's my mom yeah, she, she, she keeps, you can talk to her. She, her microphone is on. Auntie Maggie, your mic is on. You're, you're on TV. I'm on TV. I'm on TV. She's shy. Auntie Maggie, you're shy. Auntie Maggie, how are you doing? I'm good. You're good? <laughs> mommy is, mommy is uh, good. Auntie Maggie, uh, we are proud of your son. Thank you. Mommy's shy. Mommy's shy. Mommy's shy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you feel like crying. Yeah, I know, right? She, yeah. she's, she's an amazing woman. She's an amazing woman. She's an amazing woman. Very supportive. Mm -hmm. And um, the fact that I decided to even drop aeronautics and follow and do YouTube. This vlogging. And she still backed me. That is rare. I want to ask Auntie Maggie what she told your dad. How do you call your dad at home? Uh, Kapi. What did you tell Kapi to make him change his mind from engineering to... Mm. YouTube. Mm. But I'm not saying that. Well, yeah, the first video be all year. All year, only Chinese be self, be self, be being all year. Year, or Zimbabwe, or the Shannon. And I also, I was all no man's son. Now, no sooner, I was but soon. No, no, me no. I'll be free. Catch them there. Most of them are banana year. Now, Papa no so honey. Nephew, the noble folk ride the one fun and cold school there on your missile for Uncle Dog or the Kawaka one or that said, Miss Nen. And the Papa noble folk ride, Nam so ye be an aflema, and Tanya don't jam a monka. Now, only a better no yan and Cassa. This only a Cassa, a beer, the men that minority, no bachelor, no woman, no so what I say. And say, Fiona, now, now come up from Ma. So what did she tell you? For those who don't speak fancy. Hey. Oh, okay. So uh, what, my, what my mom said was, um, <laughs> I did two videos in China yes. where I was drinking water, mm -hmm. but it's in a glass of an alcohol. Mm -hmm. So you, you might think I'm it's drinking booze, alcohol. Yeah. Yes. And you being a pastor son, a lot of people know your dad, you're drinking alcohol on camera. So I think uh, my dad got mad because somebody told my dad that we saw your son drinking mm -hmm. alcohol at this place and i think that resulted in the anger of my dad when he called me and told me not to do youtube videos again yeah 
Uh, you know, you're the first person to get this story on camera. Thank you very much. Eh? We're you're the first person. No, yeah. you're amazing. Thank man. you very you're much. Person. You're great. You're a legend. <laughs> <laughs> you're a legend. You're the first person. So, you know, so, so she told him something? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. My, my, mom, my mom called me and said, but I want to say something. When my mom called me to tell me that now you can do what you're doing, I called my dad. My dad says one thing. You speak Chinese. Why are you acting this way? Whilst you can have impact with the language that you're speaking. So you know what I want you to do? If you really want to do this, use your Chinese that you speak mm -hmm. to convince Chinese people that Africa is beautiful. Wonderful. When I was doing videos, my videos were not even going viral. Mm. But after that advice from my dad, I took it and my channel blew up. So your dad has a role to play in this? No, 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 no. I, I always say. 100%. I always say and it's so just it's it was just exactly yeah mommy so had to even, enter even whatever I'm doing right now mm -hmm. I'll say it's my dad's idea whatever I'm doing right now is my dad's idea it, how, how does he feel about you now it's rather unfortunate that he's no more right now how did he feel about you he was so proud I think I did my first video a video that I did when I talked about China taking advantage of Africa it was my dad who gave me the car to go and do that video and my dad never called me Ghana baby before <laughs> But that day, my dad called me Ghana baby. Nice one. So he gave me all his blessings before he, he passed on. Yeah. I understand there's a particular hymn that has a lot of, uh, that means a lot to you. Yeah. Um, will your anchor hold? Yep. In the storms of life? Yep. What's the connection? Ha. Huh. Um, I mean, we're coming from a home, like a very Christian background. And uh, my dad, when things become tough in the house, he was saying we have an anchor that keeps the soul. For us to know that whatever is happening to us, it's just temporary, it's not permanent. So that was his favorite song, always singing that song to us. So we all, we're all singing a song together. And when things get better, he would say, Dana say, Dana say. So, Okay. Yeah. It is well, man. A hundred percent, my brother. hundred percent. Well. I'm still not used to the fact that my dad is no more. So anytime I hear this song, it, it makes me... It makes me so emotional and it actually drives me more, you know, to continue the legacy that my dad left behind. You know, my dad is somebody who... You might see him today, he might, he might be walking, he'll come back home without wearing slippers. You ask him, Dad, where are your slippers? He said, I, I don't need slippers, I give the slippers to the guy. Um, hey, hi, thank you. I, I give the slippers to the guy on the street. So that is what am I, you know. I always want to touch lives and that's what my dad was doing. If you go to the village where I was born, there are so many kids that are going to school because of my dad. So why can't I do the same? So I'm just trying to continue the legacy. Um, and I, I know that he's proud of you. Definitely. hundred percent. Definitely. And we're proud of you too. Definitely. You take care. Definitely. Have a safe trip to the southern part of Africa. Hey. Drop the videos, man. I cried on TV, oh. man. Wow. <laughs> it's all good, man. Men can cry as well, man. Yeah, I know, right? Men can cry. That was a good one, man. That's, That's Watermeyer, Africa's most influential 
YouTube. There are so many messages from all around the continent. Zambia. What, it's just it's crazy. They just love you. And you're doing great stuff for our Thank continent. You. Thank you. Uh, keep Thank flying you. the flag. Not Thank just you. of Ghana, but Thank of you. Africa. Thank you so much. And God willing, we'll meet again some other time. Thank you. You take care. Nice meeting you once again. It's yeah? a pleasure, man. It's our second time. <laughs> God bless. And big hug to mommy from, 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 from me too. I'll go and hug her after this, actually. Definitely. Thanks a lot, man. This oh, is God. GTV Breakfast. This is how we wrap it up on a Friday like this. My name is Kafri Day. Thank you for watching the video. That was for Demaya explaining how he got started with the YouTube and how his father motivated him and how Kafu Day and on behalf of GTV, they appreciated and they congratulated him. Um, a whole lot of things he's been doing has um, has got into the um, attention of um, dignitaries all over Ghana and um, I think um, it is time we also appreciate and show appreciation to whatever he's doing. That is what the Maya do you understand the most influ influential YouTuber do you understand in Africa. Thank you for sticking and staying and enjoying the video. I'm gonna come your way with more videos.